Last Wednesday, I woke up, habitually went to check my phone, and saw this message. Do you speak any Mandarin? I think someone steals your photos and videos on Chinese social media. At that moment, I had already known that someone was re-uploading my YouTube content to Chinese social media websites, which was annoying but didn't bother me too much. But when I went to check the links this person sent me alongside their message, I was shocked. This is not Olga. Her name is April and she's been living in China for 8 years. She has my voice, my face and she speaks fluent Mandarin. And here's Natasha. She's a 31-year-old Russian woman who decided to come to China to sell and advertise Russian food. I kept checking the links, terrified to realize that there's not one, but an army of my clones, each getting thousands of likes and comments. But the worst part of the story still awaited me. This is so creepy. I feel so uneasy watching this. Thanks to the advances in GPT and multimodal models, we now have a recent explosion of AI deepfakes, which can generate narrative, video, and audio. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. I've seen them before, how they impersonate celebrities and political figures, but I never expected to see myself in one of those deepfakes. In my own Instagram feed, I would always see these obvious deepfakes, some pretending to be Andrew Huberman to advertise supplements, for example, or some making memes about how Donald Trump and Joe Biden are having fun with each other. Uh, it was quite easy to detect these fakes, and I didn't give it another thought until I saw my face circulating in Chinese social media. I then translated the videos with Google Translate and figured out the most terrifying part. The narratives my clones were voicing sounded like blatant propaganda. Every single account that used my face seemed to have a hidden agenda that they were pushing. I want you to take a close look at this account called Natasha Imported Food. They portray her as a 31-year-old Russian woman who sells and advertises Russian products. And here, she already has 140,000 fans. And she has a ton of videos on my face where she likes saying how much she likes Russia and how much Russia needs Chinese economic support. And let's see what she actually has to say in regards to it. Russian people will always remember, I really appreciate China. While everyone else is moving away from Russia, only China is behind the quiet support. When other countries reject Russian stuff, it's your support to help Russia meet its immediate needs. China and Russia are good neighbors. China-Russia friendship lasts forever. And then she proceeds to advertise her Russian candies. And you can actually go here and you can buy the candies that she's advertising, which is kind of crazy because, for example, I haven't like I haven't made even like a one dollar from YouTube at the moment. And she already uses my face. They already use my face to make profit, which is very funny to me and this is the other clone uh her name is april and the storyline that they came up with for her is that she's been uh studying in china and then she decided to stay in this country because she likes china so much i think china is the most powerful country i like china and then she's saying do you welcome russian girls to marry in china and she's saying i hope the sign of russian friendship will last forever and what's interesting is that it's not only Natasha and April, there's also dozens of other clones that you can see right here. And all of these clones is what you guys have been sending me, because some people have been sending me all of these different accounts that I didn't even know existed. In the hundreds of videos that I've watched, the majority of my clones seem to talk about how great the relationship between Russia and China is, and how much Russia needs Chinese economic support. It seems like the main narrative of these clones is to strengthen the relationship between these two countries, presenting me, or my clone, as a Russian POV. As a Ukrainian, this has obviously been infuriating for me. 
After all, my family has to hide during air raid sirens and hundreds of thousands of my fellow Ukrainians are getting displaced, injured or killed because of the Russian attacks and now I'm seeing the copy of myself, my clone, advocating and sympathizing with the Russian Federation. I don't even know if someone's writing the scripts for these fake videos. Like, having read so much Russian propaganda in my life, this almost feels like some official endeavor, which is very similar to Russian troll armies on Twitter. But the truth is, it can also be a fully automated model where everything starting from the script is automated. They can scale this clone to hundreds of copies and then some of them can become viral and then you can generate more engagement by just sticking to the most successful storylines. If you check the recommended videos next to my fakes, you can actually see tons of videos with girls whose faces look kind of unnatural and filtered which actually reveals that they're also fake. For example, look at this account. Here you can find a ton of short videos with uh, Lana Blakely. Well, her face looks a little bit different here, but it's obviously based on her videos. And here, the clone is saying that she wants to stay in China for the rest of her life, and she wants to find a Chinese husband, which is extremely funny to me. <laughs> and from what I know, Lana Blakely never said anything about China, and she lives in Sweden. And I wonder if she even knows that her face was also stolen here. Lots of the real women behind these AI personas don't even know about the existence of these clones. Actually, you might have been copied there as well and have no idea, just like I didn't know before someone noticed me there and told me about it. What's crazy is that in all of these fake videos with my face, there's tons of people commenting things like, Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, I really want to meet you. Oh, please reply to me in the messages. And all of these people do not even seem to question whether the human that they're seeing is real. What's interesting is that to me, my face does look a little unnatural. It's way too filtered. Like, I can see the filter right here and here. But my Chinese friend said that actually in China, all of the media is heavily filtered. And even if you look at like TV shows, they put filters on actors' faces, which I thought was crazy. <laughs> uh, so I guess they're just used to this content. We live in an era where AI-generated content is everywhere. Artificial intelligence has made our lives easier, it made it easier to complete manual tasks, to check grammar, to even create art or write books. But in the hands of people with suspicious motives, it becomes a dangerous machine that can help spread propaganda, influence public opinion, or even help in criminal activities. These models will continue improving, but how will we discern reality in a world where seeing is no longer believing. Actually, there are currently discriminative networks being developed, which can help figure out whether the media that we're seeing is generated artificially. So if a human won't be able to spot a deepfake, will a machine help us do it? For the explanation, I asked a computer scientist who studies at Stanford University, who is coincidentally my boyfriend. I'm unfortunately not very up to date with the most recent developments of the deepfake models, but um, one that I do remember learning about was called generative adversarial networks. And the reason why they're called so is because there's the generative part and there's the adversarial part. So essentially there's two networks competing against each other, and one network is trying to fool the other network into believing that the content is real, whereas the second network is continuously trying to learn whether the content is real or not. So suppose you have police and you have counterfeit money manufacturers. In other words, fake money manufacturers. So the goal of the police is to be able to detect what money is actually fake. And then the goal of the counterfeit money manufacturers is to be able to manufacture money that the police can detect. And the better the police gets at it, uh, the better manufacturers have to become. And so this is essentially the idea behind these models. You have one model continuously learning how to detect faces, for example, 
and to tell if this is a real face or not. And then the other model, it learns the algorithm of how to create the best optimal face so that it fools the model that detects. And the way it's applicable is because these AI fakes, even if you have some kind of an automated model that continuously scans these Chinese uh, TikTok or regular TikTok and says, this face is fake and this face is not fake, well, suddenly, if you have this amazing model, then the other model can learn from it, leading to even worse deep fakes that are completely indistinguishable from reality. It's kind of a self-fulfilling loop. There's no way to escape it. It's only going to get more indistinguishable. And so we should actively start talking about how to incorporate AI produced content into these platforms in a reliable and safe way. But it's unclear how to do it. There's research groups around the world in different universities I'm sure at Stanford as well, for example, it's kind of inevitable that these models will become better and better. Edge of reality is getting blurry and blurrier. Many people love influencers. We follow their day-to-day, -day, what they're doing, what they're eating, what they're wearing. But we might reach a point where there's going to be no noticeable difference between an AI-generated influencer in a human one. This is Aitana Lopez. She's an influencer from Barcelona with hundreds of thousands of followers, and she's promoting famous brands like Victoria's Secret and Gas and Olaplex. She earns up to 10,000 euros a month, yet she's entirely created by AI. Her entire existence is a carefully crafted illusion by teams of engineers and social media managers. And this blurs the line between reality and AI even further. It's worth saying that human influencers already routinely filter their images, but what's going to happen with AI influencers who can obviously have perfect bodies and perfect pictures all the time? And what's going to be the impact on the growing population and our understanding of uh, realistic body goals? But this is a question for another video. Recently, The Guardian has posted an article about the rise of digital clones in China. Real influencers put their AI digital clones in live streams where the clone is reviewing the products the influencer is supposed to review. And then they're going to be able to generate even more revenue and more views without actually participating themselves in the live stream. An AI startup called Silicon Intelligence can generate an AI clone for you for as little as 8,000 yuan, which is around $1,100. They only need a minute-long video of you to generate a virtual live streamer. In October, there was a proposed guideline from the Chinese government to start asking for written permission, written consent from people who are getting cloned. But this new AI law is still not finalized, so my consent wasn't required. This situation brings a lot of ethical questions about identity misrepresentation and consent. This also means that we need robust regulatory frameworks to ensure that we are transparent in how we're using AI-generated content, because this can potentially lead to harming individual reputations and societal trust. I guess my last question is, why would they use my face to generate this content? Why did they use the face of Lana Blakely and other YouTubers? What is the actual motive behind repurposing the identities of countless bloggers? And who is behind these fakes that seem too close to propaganda, promoting nationalistic ideas about China and Russia? There are more questions than answers, and I will certainly continue researching this topic. Your awareness and engagement are crucial in this new digital frontier where the lines between AI and reality are increasingly blurred. Please follow me on this YouTube channel and share this video with a friend so more people can see the dangers behind this new digital revolution. Stay informed, question everything, because together we have the power to shape our online world.